Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at a recent review paper from Dr. David Sinclair, which asks whether it is possible for humans to reverse age. To decide on this, we need to be able to measure biological age in an objective way. The paper looks at some trials which have shown reversal in epigenetic age, as well as explores what this means in terms of biological age. Here is the paper, Human Age Reversal, Fact or Fiction. Chronological age does correlate with age-related diseases and conditions. However, it is not the best way to reflect a person's well-being or mortality risk. Biological age is a better way of doing this. Many, though not all, biological age clocks are based on methylation at CPG sites on the genome. These methylation marks change with age in a predictable manner and provide a computational model for biological age. In the last decade, the age shown by these clocks has been demonstrated to correlate with age-related diseases and health conditions. The difference between the chronological and the biological age is known as age acceleration. More recent research has also shown that specific interventions, such as lifestyle changes, supplements, a plant-based diet, have been able to reduce the biological age. Non-interventional studies have also shown correlation with good sleep, exercise, or a healthy diet, and the speed of the clock's progression, indicating that these biological clocks are malleable in humans. A quick bit of history on biological age. The original concept goes back to before methylation clocks. In 1974, a paper from Dr. Werner Rees mentioned that it would be important for treating the elderly and should be measurable, non-invasive, and reflect the person's capacity. Various attempts were made to quantify what biological age is over the decades, for example, based on how patients appear to their doctors. The main breakthrough came in 2011 in a paper from the lab of Dr. Eric Villain. This was the first paper to note the correlation of the change in methylation of CPG sites with chronological age. Dr. Steve Horvath was one of the authors in this study and built on it to publish his seminal paper on the epigenetic clocks in 2013, where he showed that 353 CPGs across multiple tissues could accurately estimate age. Dr. Horvath was the first to use the term epigenetic clock. The same year, Dr. Hannum also created an epigenetic clock based on whole blood. Since these original clocks were developed, there has been a lot of progress. Most clocks still use a selection of CPG inputs, but there are also clocks based on RNA, proteins, and metabolites. One measure of the relevance of these clocks is the way in which patients with diseases of aging, such as Alzheimer's or obesity, show accelerated aging. And age acceleration has also been linked to diverse factors such as cigarette smoking, bipolar disorder, and correlates with mortality and functional capacity. What trials have been shown to reverse biological clocks in humans and what interventions were used? This table lists the trials that have shown this so far. Some have used lifestyle and diet intervention, such as calorie restriction, Mediterranean-style diet, or a plant-based diet. This one we covered, which was led by Dr. Cara Fitzgerald and included diet, exercise, and relaxation techniques. Although not a lifestyle change as such, the bariatric surgery reduced the food intake and so led to weight loss in the obese participants, and this also showed positive results. Supplements have also been shown to reduce age. As in the TRIM trial led by Dr. Greg Fay with metformin, human growth hormone, and DHEA, and also another trial with vitamin D. It should also be noted that some trials have reported negative results, for example, one with weight loss and metformin in overweight individuals. Looking more generally at association from epidemiological studies, what behaviors have been associated with lower epigenetic age? A couple that showed similar results looked at factors such as fish intake, fruit and vegetable consumption, physical activity, education, and income levels, with the phenoage clock being specifically developed by Dr. Morgan Levine, optimized to predict mortality, health span, and physical function. Some other interesting factors showing a correlation with lower epigenetic age are moderate coffee consumption, a Mediterranean-style diet, 
good quality sleep, low alcohol consumption, vitamin D supplementation. A slightly different case is alpha-ketoglutarate supplementation from data gathered by users of Rejuvent, another trial that we covered. So we have seen that there is a difference between chronological age and biological age, and that this does correlate with age-related outcomes, such as mortality and disease burden. But does this represent true biological age? The clock is working at a molecular level, looking at the methylation on the CPG sites. And if it does go back, it shows that the methylation pattern looks more like a younger individual, which may indicate that the individual is younger, but it is possible that the epigenetic pattern could happen without changing the biological age. And clocks have different ability to predict aging related measurements. The CRIMAGE clock outperformed PhenoAge, Horvath and Hanum clocks on predicting health and mortality in this study. Another issue to be aware of is if the biological age is too accurate at predicting chronological age, it will not correlate well with health outcomes. Work continues to see what interventions are effective at reducing biological age. Here are some trials, particularly the TRIM-X trial, a follow-on to the TRIM trial, again organized by Dr. Fay. And other trials, including PEARL or participatory evaluation of aging with rapamycin for longevity. One mechanism of reducing biological age that we haven't covered so far is partial reprogramming. In humans, this has only been done in vitro, but from animal studies, it does look interesting. Reversal of epigenetic age has been shown possible with various interventions. Although this is exciting, no intervention has been found to stop aging in any organism yet, so caution is warranted. Epigenetic clocks seem to be a good way of measuring biological age. They certainly appear to be the best way that we currently have. I would really like to see the suggestions from the paper implemented in some studies so we could directly see the correlation between the biological age and the key clinical markers of aging. Sleep and stress management are vital for longevity. And my wife and I have been looking for ways to improve our sleep quality. After doing our research, we realized that magnesium is the key. Magnesium is a crucial mineral in hundreds of reactions in our body. And it has an impact on everything from metabolism to sleep, to energy, even bone and muscle health. It also has a role to play in stress response. So deficiency in this basic nutrient leads to bad sleep quality, low energy, accumulating stress and impacts our overall health. There are also different forms of magnesium and it's difficult to get all of it in your diet. Three months ago, we started trying a magnesium supplement from Bioptimizers. Their magnesium breakthroughs formulation has seven different forms of magnesium, all of which have a different function in the body. For myself, I really noticed the difference. I frequently get jumpy legs at night, but with magnesium breakthrough, I'm not disturbed by my jumpy legs and I get a better, deeper sleep. We're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers is offering a 10% discount for this special magnesium formula to our audience, just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description and use the coupon code modern10 for a 10% discount. Thank you so much for your support as always. Mm -hmm.